population of older individuals, and that reflects itself in terms of parametric analysis by equivalent variance between the red distribution reflecting older individuals and the blue distribution reflecting younger individuals. Contrast that to the profile you would see if age-related shortening is a pathological process. You might see the same shift in the mean, but the telltale sign of a pathological process, which by definition means that it targets a subpopulation uh, within a cohort of older individuals, this would reflect itself with a significant broadening of variance uh, in the red distribution compared to the younger individuals. And this is something that could be tested statistically. Other requirements for normal change might be uh, expecting that normal changes would change monotonically across the lifespan, whereas in a pathological process, you might see some inflection points, as illustrated here. Now, more recently, there have been other definitions that have emerged, which I think are quite interesting, and, and in many ways have forced me to shift my opinions about this topic. Uh, and that is what could be called an ecological definition of normal versus pathological. In other words, anything that changes that affects our ability to live our lives to the fullest, uh, I think, uh, uh, is could legitimately be considered a pathological state. That would be the ecological definition. And a very good example here is presbyopia, uh, uh, age-related changes in vision. And I could tell you that based on all accounts, presbyopia fulfills strict parametric criteria for a normal process based on everything I told you before. Nevertheless, I don't think anyone would object to a doctor diagnosing me with this quote-unquote disorder. I don't think anyone would object with a doctor prescribing me a therapeutic intervention, i.e. glasses, uh, which in my case occurred a year ago. Uh, and uh, I would perhaps um, want to pose a very specific question to Dr. Katz, and it's really wonderful 